Arab before istishara, or even if you had made istishara after the istikhara, because that istishara may be from the istikhara. Allah told you maybe to go and make further istishara. Do you understand that? So I'm, I'm not, I made istikhara with Allah, but um, I'm not necessarily confident yet. And part of the istikhara, Allah guided me to go and ask somebody who's more expert to get more as well opinion on board. And then I went ahead and decided. We will talk about lots of issues regarding this prayer, but let's, let's listen to the hadith, which is the main hadith, hadith Jabir. Because we do have had hadiths which are not authentic. Some of them are Abu Sayyid al-Khudri, some of them Abu Abdullah bin Mas'ud, some of them. But this is the main one, which is in Sahih al-Bukhari. And that is 718. Fadal. Hadith 718. Jabir radiallahu anhum <clears throat> reported, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to teach us istikhara, which is seeking guidance from Allah in all matters. Uh, he would teach us as, uh, like, he would teach us Quran, uh, surah of the Quran. <clears throat> he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, when one of you contemplates entering upon an enterprise, let him perform two rak'ah of optional prayer other than the fard prayers and then supplicate, Allahumma inni astakhiruka bi ilmik. Shall I translate? Uh, or just just give just translation. Yeah. Um, which is, oh Allah, I consult you through your knowledge. Wa astakhiruka bi qudratik. And I seek strength through your power. Wa as'aluka min fadlikal azim. And ask of your great bounty. Fa inna ka taqdir wa la aqdiru. So you are just in English. Only. Just English, okay. Uh, for you are capable, whereas I am not, and you know what I do not, and you are the knower of hidden things. Oh Allah, if you know that this matter, which is the matter of consultation with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, name it, is good for me in respect of my deen, my livelihood, and consequences of my affairs, or he said sooner or later of my affairs, then ordain it for me, make it easy for me, and bless it for me. But if you know <clears throat> this matter, and name that matter, which is uh, the consultation topic, to be um, bad for my deen, my livelihood, or the consequences of my affairs, or he said sooner or the later of my affairs, then turn it away from me, and turn me away from it, and grant me power to do good whatever it may be, and cause me to be content with it. And um, let the supplicant specify the object, the Bukhari and Muslim. Right, before we go to the fiqh of the salat al-istikhara, first we could see that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was keen to teach the Sahaba this salah, this particular prayer, because it's got a very great benefit in it. Okay, so the, this is the istikhara, it's been taught by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the companions and it's, you see and he taught them in the way just that he teaches Quran you know how to pronounce the Quran how to pray this prayer where to make the dua what sort of dua you should make right this Salah Salat al-Istikhara point number one Salat al-Istikhara just like other Salawat it has the same conditions the same pillars the same obligations the same recommendations the same prohibitions everything but it had extra also legislation or you see points and instructions first the istishara or istikhara first we have said it doesn't matter no problem to make Better is to make it, of course, a sishara, which is consulting the people, than the istikhara. But it's no problem to make the istishara after the istikhara, because the istishara here, consult each other people after the istikhara with the prayer, is part of the istikhara itself. Third point is the rule of this. What is the rule of this prayer? Is it compulsory? Is it recommended? Is it just permissible? It's actually recommended. And it's not compulsory. Sheikh Imam uh, Shawkan, rahimahullah, he inclined to say that it is obligatory, which synchronizes with the principles of Zahiri, like the Abu Dawood Zahiri, and also 
Dawood al-Zahari and also uh, Ibn Hazm, rahimahullah. It synchronizes with that. But the correct opinion is it is recommended. Why? Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, هم, if one of you is about to do something, the compulsory here comes from the word فَلْيَرْكَعْ Let him do. That's why the case is compulsory. But its correct opinion is it is recommended. Third point, uh, is it to do with the dunya matters or the akhira, the shara matters? Like for example, your hajj, your umrah, your whatever, you're doing your charity. Can you make a sikhara for that? Well, regarding the dunya matters, it's with the consensus of the scholars. So you make a sikhara regarding the dunya matters. As for the akhira matters, the deeds that you do to the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala, now we do not do the istikhara regarding the essence of that particular ibadah. If it's compulsory, we don't make, you know, a sikhara to pray something or to do something which is compulsory. We don't make a sikhara, shall we make fast of Ramadan this year or not? We don't do that. Or whether it is recommended also in itself, whether it's recommended or not, we don't make it. So we don't make istikhara in the So we don't make istikhara for something I need to marry. I don't make istikhara in, for example, in something recommended. That's what they said. Uh, but I make istikhara to make marriage to certain such and such person. That's the istikhara in the person, not in the actual thing if it's recommended. Because you are submitting to Allah at the end of the day. So, what did the scholar agree and what did not agree? They agreed on the following. Point one, one, that the istikhara, it is not permissible in every little detail things. I'm going to open my laptop. Hang on, make istikhara. I'm going to go to buy from the shop. Let me istikhara. No way. So the scholars had agreed that there is no istikhara in those little things. Otherwise, it would have been narrated to us. Otherwise, it would have been life. would have been very difficult for us. So there's not istikhara in every single little thing that you do. Number two, the scholars had agreed that the istikhara is not permissible in the essence of the ibadah itself. If the ibadah or something which is prohibited. I want to make a stikhara, whether shall I take this glass of uh, alcohol or not. I don't make a stikhara because it's prohibited. So Allah said it's haram. That, that's, there's no stikhara in something which has already been set by the Almighty, whether it's obligatory or recommended or, for example, disliked or it is haram. Now, also, there, there is a consensus in, among the scholars that the istikhara in regarding the things which can be surrounded by permissible things. I'll give you an example to so understand what I'm talking about. So, like for example, the marriage. I will make istikhara, not in the marriage, but make istikhara in the marriage of such and such person. I need to travel, but traveling is very important. Um, it's coming up, I'm making umrah. But I will make istikhara, not the umrah, umrah is recommended, but I'll make istikhara in what? What wind to make the umrah? Or I've got a choice here, uh, Saudi Arabian airline, uh, which is direct, or another airline which is going to go to a different country we're going to meet my family, I make a stikhara. Or going foot, or going by mount, for example, I make a stikhara. As long as I'm not really putting hardship on, him, on myself, or on, I don't think that, for example, if I walk, I will get more rewarded. There's nonsense. Prophet Sami made the umrah on, on the camel, what is available from the transport. Uh, for example, in, in a particular profession that you're going to be uh, employed, okay, something's going to give you, you know, provision, money, so you make a istikhara, house you want to purchase, okay, what house, I mean, that house, I like it, because it's got things that there, which is, uh, makes it a very good house, but I want to make a istikhara, so these are the things, so it's, house is important for me to live, but I want to see that that particular house is what is good for me, I make a istikhara. Now, the scholars differed regarding the following. So all of these have consensus, but the scholars had differed regarding the following. Do we make istikhara in something that we could see the benefit of it? Okay, right. Something that we, it's obvious. I want to make istikhara on buying a car. Not buying a that car, buying just a car. Do you understand me? Just buying a car, regardless. Paying a particular car, that's consensus. Talking about a car. And a car, I need it. And I know that there's a maslaha in it. It's instead of going you know, to my job here and there, it's going to take a long time, I'm going to waste time there. So I could see that there is 100% maslaha in buying a car. But there's the alternative is transport. And I know, I mean, transport is a headache for me. For example, do I make a stikhar in this? Scholars are differed. 
current opinion, yes. Even though the maslaha, the benefit is obvious for you, but there are hidden things you don't know. So you make the istikhara. It's obvious for you, but you make istikhara. You have got a person whom everybody said, this lady, you're going to marry, or the husband for the, for the sister. This person, a five stars. This person, half of Quran, half of Sunan. This person, mashallah, dressed up and everything. There's nothing, you know, you're ticking all the boxes. Do I make istikhara? I do make istikhara. Even I'm ticking all the boxes. I make istikhara. And you might say, well, I'm making istikhara. At the end of the day, I'm going to go and marry him. Or marry her. Yeah, but you make istikhara. Allah doesn't want you to get married. They'll put blocks there. Something that will stop you. Something will stop her. Make istikhara. Because you don't know about the hidden things. The other issue what the scholars had differed regarding making istikhara in something which is permissible, uh, recommended. Allah made it recommended. You make istikhara in it. The correct opinion, yes. We don't make istikhara in, in it. We make istikhara in recommended because, as I said, we don't know. Maybe there's something more recommended than this. Better recommended than this. Allahu alam. Now it says here the hadith, إِذَا هَمَّ أَحَدُكُمْ فَلْيَرْكَعْ If one of you decided to make a matter, then let him pray. What does that say to you? Don't leave it for a long time. Make istikhara. So here to hasten the process of making istikhara. If one of you decided to do a person thing, don't delay your istikhara. Make the istikhara. Also, is this istikhara permissible at the times which are prohibited? Times of the prohibited prayers are the following times. After we pray the Fajr until sunrise. That's number one. When the sun is rising until it's risen two meters above the horizon, which is 15 minutes after sunrise. Number three, the zenith, which is the 15 or 10 minutes before sun, before the dhuhr prayer. Number four, the sun when it goes yellow, which is like reddish. Until it sets, number five, when the sun is set. Those are the five prohibited times. We added another sixth one. No, we don't find it in the book. I found it in the saying of Sheikh Al-Albani, rahimahullah, during the khutbah. When the imam is delivering his khutbah and you came, you only are allowed to pray to rakah, no other than that. So those six places, do I pray salat al-istikhara in those times which are prohibited for any prayer? Well, the scholars have differed. Some of the scholars said, any prayer. Like that, Imam Abu Hadifa, rahimahullah. Some said, no. Like Imam Shafi, the prayers which got, just got no reason, those are the prohibited, the general nafil. But the one who's got a reason, like Sunnah Wudu, like Tahiyyat al-Masjid. That's why you find the funny person, Hanafi, during the sunset, he will not pray. He will sit down. But you must pray, because the Prophet said, can't sit down until you pray. Actually, this, is, this type of prayer, which is Tahiyyat al-Masjid, you have to pray it in a time there's no other prayer can be prayed, and that is when the khatib is delivering his khutbah. You can't pray except for Tahit al Masjid. I can't pray Sunnah Tudu. I can't pray as well to Raka'awad of Istikhara. So, is it permissible for me to pray to Rakh Istikhara in those times? Yes, it is permissible because the correct opinion is got a reason. So you could pray it. So, if you have remembered that something you need to do, you need to do, let's say it's after you to pray the Fajr. You need to, to go and see the sister for a potential marriage. Okay, my, my time is going to go by 8 o'clock. Do I need to wait until sunrise after 15 minutes? No. I make my istikhara straight away, regardless of that prohibited time. Tayyip, another point. Now, you are in a prayer, let's say, two sunnah of, let's say, tahit al-masjid, or the two sunnah of the wudu. You've started it. Already, and then came to you a gesture. It came to you a gesture. Bismillah. Aha, uh -huh, I need to go make a sikhara for such and such thing. Do I, am I allowed to include that into that sunnah, into that sunnah? Just make it a sikhara. So at the end of the prayer, I'll add the dua, which is dua al istikhara. Do I need to do that? Mm, not allowed. Because it's the niyyah has to start from the beginning of the prayer, not while the prayer is on, at the beginning of the prayer. So I cannot, in the middle of the prayer, switch my intention to add the salat al-istikhara. Prophet of Allah, the hamma ahadu. If one of you had about to do something, then let him. So the niyyah start from the beginning. Then let him make the two rak'ah, 
which is other than the two rakah of the sunnah. That gives us another point, which is, first of all, is that this two rakah, are they any two rakah or specifically two rakah for the istikhara? Well, the hadith says, من غير الفريضة cannot be fard, cannot be fard, cannot be vohar prayer, asr prayer, maghrib prayer, isha prayer, fajr prayer. I cannot make that istikhara. Okay? So I cannot make istikhara with a fard prayer. Now, can I make that istikhara included into taraweeh prayer? Make it, for example, to sunnah of the dhuhr, to sunnah after the dhuhr. Can I make the istikhara? Now, the scholars are different, but the correct opinion is that Prophet ﷺ, he said to specify and designate two rak'ah for what? For the istikhara. This is, I would say, not just the best, I would say this is the only option which is correct. I mean, this is another upgrade. Before I would say, maybe for example, it's best, no, option, because let you pray just for this. This is the only way to get the istikhara, is to designate two rak'ah for the istikhara. Scholars regarding how many rak'ah is salat al-istikhara. The hadith says what? Two rak'ah. Do you think that the scholars had differed? Yes, they differed. They have consensus, and number one, then you can't make it one rak'ah. Consensus is not allowed. Number two, consensus that you can't make it witr prayer. You can't make a sikhara three rak'ah or five rak'ah. Huh? You can't make a sikhara in that. It has to be what? Even number. Now they differed whether it is uh, two, they say it's the best, some of them, but they said it's allowed to make it four, allowed to make it six. But the hadith is clear here, he says, two rak'ah, so we don't add onto the two rak'ah. If anyone want to include another two rak'ah, where is the proof for that? Right. Why the scholars, they said, could add another two? Because the, the, how they understand the hadith. It doesn't mean that, if I let them do two rak'ah, it means a number, a specific number. That means, let them do the prayer, not a specific number. We, to encounter this, we say, no, this is not to do with how many rak'ah. This is to do with the description of the prayer. The description of the prayer is two rak'ah. Prophet is describing how to pray Salat al-Istikhara. What does he read? In both rakahs, he must read the Fatiha, of course. And that's where the consensus. But what do I read after the Fatiha? So some of the scholars, they said, you read the first rakah, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ سَكِنْ رَكَعَ قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ And they get a reason for that. Some other they said no, and they get a verse, for example, from such and such surah, and another verse from such and such surah. Both opinions are not as strong as the opinion which says, الْأَمْرُ wasa. It is spacious here. You could read whatever you want as long as you read the Fatiha. There is no specific surah to be read because there's no hadith. So it is mutlaq, general. Now, do we make the istikhara before salutation or after salutation? It depends upon the word which says thumma. Thumma. Uh, then. Is that then? Is in that after the prayer? Okay. Shaykh al Islam Taymiyyah, he said, it doesn't matter whether before or after. Okay, we'll go along this. If somebody did it before, we'll go along with that. But what is better? The hadith says, after he said, then after you do the two rakah, then falyakra, let him recite this dua. So it means after your salutation. But if somebody did it before salutation, after he had finished the tahiyyat, salat ibrahimiyya, okay? After he made the dua of the tashahud, then he started with dua al istikhara. We can't say that you are invalidating your prayer. But we say to you the following, which is, if you are inside the prayer, then how about now reciting the dua of al-istikhara? Are you allowed to do it from a booklet? After the prayer, no problem. Because if you finish the prayer, you could bring a booklet and start reading the dua of al-istikhara. So if you are before the end of the prayer, okay, and the matter is spacious, we said, and you don't know the dua, and you need to read a book, you can't be in a prayer. Start holding a book while you are in a prayer after the tahiyyat and you start you know, flicking a page and your eyes go over them. That's not really the correct thing to do. So if you are a person who is doing the istikhara before the end of the salutation, then make sure that you are memorizing it. I'm not saying your prayer will be invalid if you held a book because we don't invalidate the people who pray in taraweeh holding, not number nine, the paper, the whole mushaf like this, I've seen them. Uh, the whole mushaf like that, and he's sucking them. And I have seen those people who have got no knowledge, they took this opportunity to go and teach people what to do in the taraweeh because of the COVID-19, you remember? And he put a stand like this big mushaf, mashallah, and he was reciting like this while he's reading, making fatiha like this. 
Uh, subhanallah. We want Ikhwani to produce Imams with what? With hifal. Not with uh, flicking pages or monitors. You see about, have you heard about the Imam? Monitors Imam, monitors Imam. Okay. Some of the masajid, unfortunately in my country, so many masajid these days, part of the Imam's area, they'll build a stand where there's got a, uh, a screen, never mind a mushaf, no, a screen. I've seen it. And this screen is linked to a watch, and that watch is wireless to the connect to the screen. So that imam would flick, well, press that button, and the screen will flick to go to the next page. It's a big, big mushaf, but you could see it from far, as long as you got you know eyesight properly. <laughs> but you could see it. I could see it. I mean, very big. So I, I went to one of these monitors and I with the imam, subhanallah, because he was reading taraweeh from this. So I tried to put the watch and chick, pff, all of the page, and it's got a bit of sound just to show you that it's flicked, because it might flick. If you don't have a sound, you thought you did not flick, you, and you're not half of it, you could recite from different surah. So that click, it's like this. It's like a page going like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's the sound of it. To make you understand, he's flicked one. But if he did like this, that means a lot of pages. So the man will be aware of SubhanAllah. So he's doing it, and I said, this is electric. Battery back packed. Okay, batteries gone run out, electric run off. Screen switched off. What is he going to say? Well, he said, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad. <laughs> Khalas. He switched from the surah to what he knows from the Quran. Khalas. He said to me, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Allah said, well, you're right. <laughs> so Sheikh al used to say, we don't want monitor imams. Mus'haf imams. We want half of imams. If we're going to do, Wallahi, I know a hafiz. A hafiz. And young. Because he's got this in a facility, he is lazy to revise his hifl. So he started using what? The monitor. And when you know a person reading from the monitor, as a person who's a customer, a person who's praying behind the imam, do you have the same khushu if the imam is reading the monitor? No. Only you have khushu with the person who was what? Who's half of. Because the one who's half of the receptive of his heart, the one who's reading from the page, he doesn't even, he does not even prepare. Wallahi, I had, is this prayer, person who is reading from the Mus'haf, and person behind him is correcting from him the Mus'haf as well. MashaAllah. He's making Mus'haf his mistake, and this person reading from the Mus'haf correcting him. He's <laughs> correcting his recitation. <laughs> it's funny, but it's really as well. It's, Allah, it's very sad, very sad to see this. طيب. So I would say to the person, if you are going to do it before the salutation, which is not the better option, then you better to be half of, of that dua. If you don't know the dua, what you should do? That means you can't read, you don't know how to dua, you don't memorize it, say what you like. You just you know, as long as you are making istikhara. So this person, for example, he would say, Allahumma khirli, oh Lord, choose for me. And he just says, oh, he's very good in you know, detailing what he wants from Allah. Just choose for me, oh Lord for what I want to do, or shall I marry this woman or that woman, or shall I marry this woman, shall I go ahead? So if you don't know the dua, but the dua of course has got the barakah. This is an option for the person who doesn't read, doesn't memorize, and doesn't know the dua. طيب. The Now coming to the point which is, do I or am I allowed to repeat the istikhara? I made two raka'ah after five, six days. I'm not really relaxed. I'm going to make another two raka'ah. Right. There's two options. There's two I could say cases, you should say. Two cases. Case number one, you made the istikhara, you're still not really happy. You're not arriving to the conclusion. In this case, you make the istikhara. We're going to have a proof of this. You could repeat it. If you have, you know, now after the istikhara, you could think, you think that you could, you know, you could go ahead with it, then there is no need for you to make the istikhara. We have the story in Sahih al Muslim of. Abdullah ibn Zubair was about to implement what he had heard from his auntie, and that is uh, Asma, uh, sorry, uh, his auntie Aisha radiallahu anha, about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa hadith, and Aisha, because Aisha, remember, she's the sister of Asma, Asma is the mother of Abdullah. So in that hadith, it says that the Prophet of Allah, he said, if I have the option on the control of the Kaaba, and because your people are not close to the Jahiliyyah, I would have demolished the Kaaba 
and rebuilt it on the basis and the foundation of Ibrahim alayhi salam, which is to expand it, to include that semicircle, to be like one part of the Kaaba. I would have as well made the door the, onto the ground instead of, you know, because the people used to, the Quraysh wanted to give the elite people the ladder, and other people cannot go to the door of the Kaaba. And I will make another door to the opposite side so can, people can go in and go out if they wish. But the Prophet did not do it because of those reasons. When Abdullah ibn Zubayr, he was the mayor of Mecca, he was in control. So he said, didn't you hear this hadith, people? Yes, they've heard this hadith. And it's not just Abdullah ibn Zubayr, he knows it. But this is from his auntie. So he wanted now to implement the hadith. People were scared. You're going to demolish the Kaaba. You know, you're going to put that Kaaba in the Kaaba. It's like the house of Allah. And they know that what happened to the uh, army of uh, Abraha al-Ashram, the elephants. So he said, Inni mustakhirun rabbi thalathan. I'm going to make a stikhara with Allah Azza wa Jalla three times. So here the repetition of the stikhara took place loudly and openly. Abdullah ibn Zubayr and companions are present from them Abdullah ibn Umar. Other companions did not object and that's like a consensus, that's an agreement. So we have a proof that the istikhara can be repeated. And that hadith is said in Sahih al-Imam Muslim. There is a hadith which is narrated in Musannaf, Musannaf Abdul Razak, which is about Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu ardahu when he wanted to write the Sunan. And people, they said, no problem. But he said, I'm going to make istikhara for a month to write it. For a month, istikhara. And at the end of the day, he said, no, I'm not going to do it because I'm, not, I'm going to mix between the Quran and the hadith, the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, what do I do after the istikhara? What is it the thing that this hadith says to me that it will indicate this is the thing you need to choose? What is it? So, first of all, should in the, uh, we have to make a, de, you know, a decisive sort of a peer thing, a fact, and that is there is no proof. There's no proof that you're going to have an, a, a dream, for example. You're going to have, for example, uh, things becoming like, nice to you. No. There's no such thing. There's no proof for that. But it could be followed by relaxation for what you want to do. So you are speaking istikhara uh, in regarding this sister, whom you're not sure. But after the istikhara, I became what? More sure, more happy to go ahead. Okay? But let me, first of all, emphasize thing, Khwani, that maybe this is not going to happen. What should I do in the case? You could repeat the istikhara. Still nothing happened. What should I do? Then I'll go ahead. Either I will stop what I want to do, or to go ahead. Because Allah will... If you don't go ahead, Allah maybe he wants you to go ahead, he will encourage you somehow to go ahead. Or if you wanted to go ahead, Allah doesn't want you to go ahead, he will do something like, for example, he will put lots of police on your way to go drive there and maybe to block you, maybe give you fines and maybe have an accident. Allahu Alam. So you go, but don't make this to be haunting you. Do you understand me? It becomes a waswasa then. Waswasa. So instead of the thing that you want to make a stikhara, it made a burden upon you. Stikhara shouldn't be a burden, but it should be helping you. It should make you relax. Not to keep thinking, what's, what's, oh, I didn't see anything. Okay, so that's not correct. That pushes us to the following point, because some people, they will say, I haven't arrived at a conclusion. I didn't do anything. So, brother, doctor, make me stikhara on my behalf. <laughs> so they do. And that's not correct. And I've seen some people, they do it. I said, I've seen a sheikh. Allah must with the Sheikh. He said, I'm making istikhara on behalf of such and such. Nobody can pray on behalf of somebody. I could make a dua for you, no problem. Oh Lord, make him to see the basira, to see the haqq. Make this person, help him to do that. But to make a, to, a prayer on his behalf, I'm going to have a fair relaxation on behalf, on his behalf. And that's not correct. And as I said, I'm saying this because there are, you'll find she who do such a thing and it's not, try. there's no end to that. Hadith of the Prophet, nor in the hadith of the companions, where somebody went to somebody and said to him, Give me istikhara on my behalf. So, with this consensus of all scholars, no istikhara on behalf of somebody. But you could make dua to somebody, dua in general. Oh Lord, make it easy for this person to see where the haqq is. Uh,
Just making sure that I don't leave anything. طيب. The, the, now, the istikhara. Can I do it in more than one thing? I've got a car to buy, and I've got a sh- house to buy, and I've got a wife to, huh? got a wife to marry. Lump these three things into one dua. Oh, Lord, if you know this good wife is for me, is good. I want a house. I want to buy. It's really good. And this car I'm going to buy is really good. And yeah, I make a lump on more than one thing. Okay, the scholars, they said, if the thing is linked together, then there is istikhara in one. But if it's separate, the correct opinion to make the individual istikhara for each. What is linked one? For example, I want this university, and at the same time as well, I'm going to ask, oh Lord, about this university, and I'm asking as well about this professor, which is inside the university, is right or not? Shall I go ahead and you know, link myself to him and take this material with him? So it's to one item, to one thing, no problem. Okay, so this is linked, you could make it in one. But if it's separate, like when I said, a house and a car and a wife, three different things, three istikharas, individuals. Type. The, this is the correct opinion, wallahu alam. Some scholars, like Ibn Jibreen, he said he could lump them together. But what is the proof? What is the proof? Hal yusammi hajata, should he say it or just with intention? When he, when he said, oh Lord, if you know this is good for me in my dunya, in my livelihood, in my akhirah, then make this thing to be good. And he said, let him what? Name it. Okay. So does he have to say it? The one, oh Lord, I'm talking about, for example, I'm saying for me to go and get this house, for me to take this job, for example. Do I name it or just intention Allah knows? No, you name it. Allah knows you're a stikhara anyway in the first place. You could just say, I'm not going to make a stikhara. Allah knows what I want. Call us. That's it. Oh Lord, you choose for me. No salah, no dua. <laughs> no, you have to do what Allah told you to do in order to gain what Allah promised you he's going to give you. So here you make the salah and you name the thing and you say it. You say that issue. And that's why we say, Akhwani, that in the salah it will not be fit to put things which is not part of the salah. You know, when you are before the salutation, you're going to say, Oh Lord, I want to ask about the university. That's including in the salah and the shahwa. That's not really befitting. It's fitting to be what? After the salah. After you finish the salutation. And it's much easier as well for you. طيب. Salat al-Sikhar, ikhwani, it is more of specified than dua. Dua is different. The Salat al is different from dua. Dua, for example, Lord, uh, give me help to choose a better wife. That's in itself. But this is not the Salat al This is something the Prophet Allah taught us, the companion. So it is dua plus. Dua and plus. Wallahu ta'ala alam. By this, alhamdulillah, believe that I have tackled and finished all the things regarding the Salat al-Istikhara. If there is any benefit, by the way, you could gain, some of the scholars had gained from this hadith, more than 80 benefits. 80 benefits from this uh, Salat, or this hadith of the Istikhara. طيب, let's go now, inshallah, khwani. Hadith of chapter 98. We started at quarter past or ten past. Ten past maybe, yeah? Yeah, just another chapter, because it's only one hadith. Anyway. <coughs> chapter 98, excellence of adopting different routes for going and returning on Eid prayer and various other occasions. Hadith 719, Jabir radiallahu anhu reported on the occasion of the Eid, the Prophet وسلم, would proceed to the prayer place taking one route and returning from another, Bukhari and Muslim. Right, so this is a chapter to do with going to Salat al-Eid. Going to Salat al-Eid, Ithrat al-Eid, it is Sunnah, is to pray it not in the Masajid, but in the open space. Salat al-Eid, correct opinion regarding it, is compulsory upon those people who are adults, whether they are males or females, and not compulsory upon the children. So the Salat al-Eid is in contrast to any other Salah where the sisters are not obligated to come to the Jum'ah, but they are obligated to come to the Salat al-Eid, even the one who do not pray, the Prophet he said that she should come just to witness the gathering, even the one she has no clothes to cover herself, he said let her sister, I mean her sister, whether his blood sister or sister in Islam, to lend her address in order to come and participate. So Salat al-Eid, 
Well, it's not, by the way, one opinion which is agreed upon. This is controversial, but we believe that is the correct opinion. And the Prophet ﷺ, he had warned that these people who do not do certain things, that you should not come to pray. Like, for example, Salat Eid Ladha, if you do not make you sacrificial, and, and you had in the means to do so, means the financial means and all of that, and you do not do it, let him not approach our musallah. So if it's uh, Salat al-Eid is not as compulsory, then okay, I'm not going to go to the musallah because Salat al-Eid is not compulsory anyway. So I will not slaughter the old hayah and I will not come to the musallah. And the hadith is authentic and gives it a strong power that the old hayah is compulsory and also Salat al-Eid is compulsory. And as I said, it's controversial. According to Sheikh al-Albani, Sheikh al-Bathameen, they say it's compulsory. Sheikh al says it's not compulsory. Um, here he says that the Prophet is to go in the Yad Eid, one path comes back from another path. That is as well an etiquette, which you could do it whether in a car or on foot. Of course, if you are available to do it on foot, means the place where you're going to go to is not far, then on foot is better than going by the car. And when you go from one path and return from another path, you're not just implementing the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, but also you are gaining those things that maybe you don't know about from the hikmah. Like, for example, some of the scholars, they said they're going to meet different angels on each path. Number two, you're going to be making more da'wah when people see you in terms of takbir, in terms of your clothes, when you pass one by one area and then you go to the different area. And this will, uh, you know, give to the, to the people seeing you how the Muslims are keen to celebrate their Eid day. And ikhwani, the scholars, they said, if a person wants to know how civilized any tribe or any person or any uh, civilization, how civilized they are, how behaving they are, how human they are, look how they behave in their Eid days, in the celebration days. So you compare now between Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Fatr, how the people when they go to the prayer and how they pray and how they make dua and how they are dressed up properly and those people who celebrate, for example, Christmas, what do they do? And what happens after the Christmas? What happens with the black eye and, you know, and <laughs> You know, somebody knocked somebody and somebody urinated on something and he's outside in the street urinating on himself, you know. So in, uh, in the Christmas, yeah, the police will be what? On edge because of the amount of people who are drunk. And when you're drunk, you can do whatever you want because you you're not control. And the amount of people who are in, you know, police when they are in the time of Eid, the Eid where people and peace and safety and all of that, mashallah, because they are doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them to do. But the other ones, they're doing what their whims and desires want to do. There's no such thing. This is the sunnah of Christmas. There's no such thing. The sunnah of the Eid. Do you understand me? There's no sunnah. Sunnah of the Christmas. Never, nobody would say to you, Ya Akhi, you've done on the Christmas bid'ah. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah. Have you heard about this? I mean, Christians, you know, Akhi, you've done a bid'ah in Christmas. What sort of bid'ah? Everything's allowed, Akhi. Everything's allowed. There's no such thing, bid'ah and sunnah. Not doing it is bid'ah. <laughs> Maybe not doing it is bid'ah. Yeah. Nah, there's no such thing. So, now, so if somebody, for example, they've got a tree, and then you know, they bring the tree, for example, and let's shape this tree, okay, and he brought these jungle bills on it, okay, and whatever, and then somebody brought banana tree. They were going to say, you Buddha, get out of our religion, you made banana tree here, nobody. But for us, if we had the tree like this, it has to be the same. It has to be exactly what the Prophet had done, not something out of our mind, the more... Somebody came from a, a, a Hindu background. Uh, it related to me as well. Um, so he came from a Hindu background. And he said to me that each priest has his own way of conducting the marriage. The Hinduism, how to conduct. So some of them, they will come and they will, for example, put a dot here on each. Other person will bring some rice and throw it on your head. Some people, each one. And those people, they just go ahead how naive it is, they'll go ahead. They will not question, where is your proof, priest, for the rice? Where is your proof for this dot, how big it is? There's no proof. It's what he designs. This is his religion as he goes along. Okay? There's no such thing, the sunnah of such and such uh, prophet. Whereas we, but the prophet. Anything outside the prophet, bid'ah. We have a whole bid'ah. These people are celebrating the birth of the prophet, sallallahu Oh, where is the birth of the Prophet? Well, I keep telling my students, Ikhwani, to encounter all the time the Salah, the, uh, the festival of the Mawlid, which we had, unfortunately, last month. First of all, you just say to them, 
regarding the birthday of the Prophet. Aren't we, aren't we supposed to follow the Messenger وسلم, and the companions regarding his Eid day? They have to establish this point. Type. Now, they might say to you that the Prophet of Allah celebrated or the companions. It's nonsense, by the way. First, I was talking about the Salat al Kusuf. You know, al Kusuf, which is when the sun is blocked by the moon during the day. So the sun is supposed to be showing you rays, but there's the moon, which is a small one, came into the uh, direction of the sun. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator. He made it with such a size and such distance between it and the earth and between it and the sun to block the sun, not just completely, exactly. If it's a full eclipse, uh, full eclipse, khusuf. It will exact, that's, that's from Allah, it's not coincidence, can't be coincidence. And you'll find the sun, the rays is outside and you find something black and that's the moon. Prophet of Allah had the khusuf only once in his life. He had khusuf, eclipse of the moon, uh, but nobody was awake to do it. But eclipse of the sun only once, witness only once. In this once we have 21 companions documented that, authentic hadiths. One incident. How many companions? 21. Prophet Sallallahu when he had his revelation, he was 40. He died when he was 63. So at least he had six, to what, how many? 22 birthdays. At least. From 40 to 63. I give and take. We'll just make a what? 22 birthdays. Not 23. 22 birthdays. 22 birthdays. At least we should have what? One companion or 22 companions. Not a single companion narrated any incident of birthday celebration of the Prophet during this life of his between his 40 and his 63. Whereas one incident, which is the eclipse, 22 companions narrated for us. 22, sorry, 21 companions, 21 companions narrated for us with authentic chain. All of them authentic that the Prophet ﷺ had made the eclipse. And we tell them again, if he did celebrate, what type of halwa the Prophet of Allah had chosen for his Eid? We want to know. So we could get the same halwa. Sunnah, <laughs> I want to get the same halwa of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Ta'ala alam. By this we have finished, alhamdulillah. Now we go to the hadith 720. Hadith 720, Ibn Umar radiallahu anhum reported, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to go by the way of a shajara and return by the way of al muarras and he would also enter Mecca through the higher pass and would leave it through the lower pass, Bukhari and Muslim. Uh, that shows, shows us, the, first of all, the indication of how Prophet of Allah used to differ every time he goes to the Eid and come back from the Eid. And also, here in this hadith, it does not talk about the Eid, does it? No. Yeah, okay. So that's why the scholar, Imam Ibn al Imam al Nawi, rahimahullah, he said that it's not just the Eid. He says as well, when you, for example, visit the sick person, or when you make hajj, or when you uh, do uh, invasion or jihad in sabilillah, or you make the salat al-janazah, is to come to go from one path to and come back from another path. Imam al is hujjah for this. That is, that is to takthir, to increase the spots of ibadah. To increase the spots of ibadah. Right, I can't see a sunnah that in that, okay, but I can't see a sunnah that the, Abdullah ibn Umar he had seen because he had seen himself the Prophet of Allah doing this. Whereas the other one, Prophet of Allah usually he does it with Salat al-Eid. Salat al-Eid and the Prophet of Allah is not that many. It's not that many. So they've been counted. So he used to see him going this, Kana Rasulullah. That means it's continuous. This one, as an incident, Abdullah ibn Umar, he had seen him coming from this, coming from that. It could be for a reason. So we cannot really jump to a conclusion to say the sunnah is when you do hajj, you come from one place, you go from, sorry, you go from another place, come from another place. You make jihad, same thing. You go to salam janazah, same thing. Now, Allahu alam. By this we're finished. We'll come to questions, inshallah. khair. Questions are 10 minutes or 5 minutes. And thank you very much for waiting. Jazakumullah for the class. Allah, this is really show that you are keen to learn. Alhamdulillah. Any question, Khwani, from the... Fadl. Um, if we choose to do the istikhara dua in the salah, what exactly do we do it in the salah? 
But that's after the tashahud. So when you finish at tahiyyat, salah al-Ibrahimiyya, your dua, the isti'adha the from the four or from the five, from the dajjal. And then after you finish, then you start doing your dua al-istikhara. That is if it is before the salutation. Because before salutation, because he said, let them then. But the correct opinion, we say that not correct opinion, the more in, inclined to say that it's better and more appropriate is qal thumma. Then after that, after you finish the prayer, let him pray. Then after that, you make the dua. Allah Do you think fruits are obligatory prayers as well? No, no, no. Different. That's what I just said. Only the Eid prayer, and it's not obligatory. It's recommended. If you came from the same route on the Eid day, it's no problem. Okay. But I just said now these days, it's very easy to take different routes because you know you've got Google to help you. Huh? Google alternative. Huh? So, alhamdulillah. So, I mean, I, when I used to go by my car, because my Eid prayer is usually about 30 or 40 miles away from me, I always choose a different route. Alhamdulillah. Tayyip, Fadal. Regarding the istikhara dua, does it have the same rules as a normal dua? Like you praise Allah, you say salam, salam. That's a good dua. That's actually a good question. طيب, when we make the dua, he's saying now it's not before the end of the prayer, talking about after the prayer. Because before the prayer, you can't raise up your hands while you are making the shahud like this. So after the dua, this is very good, which is, hasn't been dealt with, which is that do I need to make lifting up my hands in the dua? Okay. The correct opinion, Ikhwani, that because it's dhikr, let him dhikr, because the Prophet Wasallam said, Allahumma inni, so like a dhikr. So I would not raise up my hands because there is not being mentioned. But when it comes to your issue, when you name your matter, okay, that's where you could raise up your hands. When you name your matter, you could raise up your hands. You could. But if you did not raise up your hands at all in that, no problem. Okay, if you raise your hands, and in that sense, taking it from the example of that, he's, he's like a dua, we say, Ikhwani, because it's a specific, and the Jabir radiallahu anhu said, he's to teach us this prayer, like he's to teach us the Quran. So we know about the Quran in every detail, how to make the ghunna, the ikhfa, the iqlab, everything, the qalb, everything we make it. So he did not mention to us that raising up the hands. That's why we leave it as it is without raising up the hands. But if he did, we're not going to say your uh, istikhara would be invalid. Another one is, what can I make it in my own language? If you don't know the Arabic, you're not a learning person, yes, you could make it in your own language. But remember, that dua, if you know it, it's in Arabic. Don't translate it. So, Allahumma inni astakhiruka bi'ilmik, wa astakdiruka bi'qudratik, wa as'aluka min fadlika al-azim. Don't say, oh Lord, I seek your knowledge, and I seek, no. It's like when you read the Fatiha. You're saying in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. You don't say that. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Okay? That's, so it is dua, and so in those words that you're mentioning, this is where the barakah lies, in the dua of the Arab. If you don't know, Bengali, or Chinese, oh, you're not Chinese. <laughs> Allah Azza will understand you. Allah will, will understand all the languages, so you could say anything that you want. I mean, imagine that boy, he didn't recite the Fatiha. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illa Allah. And the Prophet accepted that as a Fatiha, because you can't read the Fatiha. And he's an Arab. He couldn't read the Fatiha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, la ilaha illallah. Like Allah wrote that question. So just linked to that, Shaykh. Um, linked to this. Not raising hand, but the other bits of the etiquette of the dua. Uh, we don't need it because it's dhikr. Is that correct? Sorry? It's like, you know, praising Allah and salutation, Prophet, then the dua. Because yeah. it's dhikr, we don't need to do those. When we make dua normally, yeah. Yeah. we praise Allah, then do the salutation to Prophet Sallallahu and then we make our dua. Yes. Yeah, this yeah, yeah, this, yeah. When I talked about, if you remember, if it's a dua, and I said this is a plus, salah, it's, 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 it's dua plus. The dua, the etiquette of the dua, which is linked to that question, the etiquette of the dua that you start normally, without this, the care of the salat istikhara, you start normally by praising Allah. And passing salutation upon Prophet. Then you make the dua and then you end up with what? With also passing salutation upon the Prophet. These are from the etiquettes of making the general dua, which is well done. So these are the etiquettes of the dua. Now, I mean, we don't do that in the issue of this. 
Okay. We don't do that as in to make, for example, before we do al-istikhara, I have to praise Allah Azza wa Jal. No. Allahumma inni astakhiruka bi ilmik wa astakhiruka bi qudratik wa astakhiruka min fadlik al-azim. Kunta ta'lam bi anna hadha al-amr, wa tusammi, huwa khairun li fi dini wa ma'ashi wa aqibati amri, fa yasir li wa qadur li. Wa kunta ta'lam bi anna hadha al-amr, sharun li fi dini wa ma'ashi wa aqibati amri, fa asrifu anni wa asrifni an, wa qadur li al-khair haythu kan, thumma ardini bih, aw raddini bih. That's the dua of the istikhara. Anybody else? تفضل صلاة الاستخارة ودعاء الاستخارة دعاء صلاة صلاة الاستخارة includes the دعاء but the دعاء in itself that's different you want صلاة الاستخارة go on I think maybe you missed the point. I said, if you have more than one thing, which is different things, you have a house to buy, you have a car to, and it came at the same time. I said, make istikhara for each one. But if that thing is linked to each other, so you're talking about a job, but at the same time, the job in terms of the salary. So you put that into the eye because the salary linked to the type of the job, linked to the where the job is, okay? That's no problem. Okay, so you link it together. So I'm asking, oh Lord, if the job in terms of distance-wise is good for me, in terms of salary is good for me, in terms of change, profession is good for me, it's a job. So one istikhara. But if it is a job plus a wife, each one has his got its own istikhara. Is that what you're asking about? Yeah. Okay. Does that answer your question? So you can do it throughout the day as many times as you want for different, different people. No, when you mean, in the, like for example, I have the wife, I'll do the istikhara. I'm not going to do another wife, every second a wife, a wife. So I made a stikhara for the wife. Yeah. Two minutes later, or the same after they finished, I make a stikhara for the house. Yeah. Two, three minutes later, or, or, I will stand up straight away and make another stikhara for the car. Okay. Yeah. So what is, is that okay? Yeah, yeah. No, here, inshallah. Yeah. Right, anybody else, Khuni? Fadal? Uh, they wanted to ask the chef, uh, you know when you talk about taking different routes back from um, after the Eid prayer, could this also apply to the Jummah prayer as well? I'll repeat that again. Oh, no, enough. He just asked for the Jama'ah prayer. No, we don't do that. He asked. Same thing, Jama'ah, Jama'ah. We said only for the Eid, ya khwani. We said that. And they're going to ask you, somebody going to, oh, I'm going to take a, take a wife. Should I go from one route and come back? <laughs> when I get a wife? <laughs> only for the Eid. Um, so this is the last question, actually, from the last week. That is it true that our Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, will marry three women in Jannah, the mother of Isa, the wife of Firaun, and sister not, of Musa. Not, not authentic. Not authentic. Allahu alam. Because Asya, she doesn't have a husband. You know, Asya, she's going to be having. Not Firaun. Firaun is in the hillfire. Okay, she's got a different husband. Allahu alam. But is she going to be the wife of Muhammad? Allahu alam. Now, can you use him? And then, can we make dua just generally, like separate from Salah? Like, Salat al-istikhara, it has to be like this. Dua, dua na istikhara, dua to Allah. I don't say istikhara. Dua. Oh Lord, facilitate for me if this is right for me. But not salat al-istikhara. Salat al-istikhara does not have a con the substitute of your dua. Salat al-istikhara is different. Salat, it's got ahkam, rules. Okay, so don't substitute. But it, as I said, if you ask Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you made a dua with the presenting of the hands and all of this, but that particular dua which I have recited is linked to the salah. You don't do it on its own. Okay? Now, Tfaddal ya Dr. Said. My parents bought a house via riba, and they want me to help them in future to pay it off. Am I sinful for paying it off for them? Uh, of course, the question is obvious and the answer will be very obvious. You're not allowed to help someone who's doing haram, especially if it's to do with the riba and the mortgage. And the Prophet, Allah Azza wa said, ala al wa taqwa wa la ala al wa la You should not be cooperating with haram. It's definitely haram. But the way to now encounter this with your parents, you have to be careful as well, not to shout at them, this is haram, but to evade to give them that, knowing they should know the fact that I cannot involve into this haram. You could, for example, involve an uncle or an auntie who is older than your father, and she could come to them and say to them, I cannot, you know, 
You know, like, it's, like, it's like a person who's a, a boy who's been asked by his father, go and buy me a cigarette. This happens. Go and buy me a packet of cigarettes. Uh, not a bottle of alcohol. Bottle of alcohol. I don't think the father would do that to his son. He was a Muslim. But the packet of cigarettes? <laughs> I mean, in my country, tell me where is that father who doesn't ask his son to go and get a packet of cigarettes? Go on, is he? I want to know where. So now that child is grown up and he's become an adult, 16, 15 years old, and he's asking, it's haram, what should I do? Don't get that packet of cigarettes. I know your father maybe will respect it as long as you don't say to father, father, I mean, for me this is haram. I can't bring you the haram. Please excuse me. I think he will be raised in it. And you could be a da'wah as well to him as well. So you know, the, point to, the point here, make sure that you address this issue very carefully with your parents, but you're not allowed to help him in that mortgage. Tafaddal. No. Here in everything, meaning is not that tiny little things, means it means the, the things that they are considerable. Not little things like, I want to eat dal today. I want to eat curry. Seafood for today, but istikhara. Nobody would do such a thing. This is crazy. They have the scholars had consensus regarding this issue. There's no insikhara in daqa'iq al masail the minute little things. Otherwise, you're going to end up your, your life making istikhara. You can't move from one point to another point, making istikhara. Because if you have said this, okay, you're going to move to the toilet. Shall I make a certain istikhara? To go to the toilet first, or a bit, start, sit down a bit for, you know, more. What should I do? Don't make istikhara. So here, the hadith, it means, which you have read, those little things which people do not consider to be considerable thing. So for example, when they buy a car, they don't make a sikhara. When they change from one house to another, they make a sikhara. For them, this is significant. Only when it's to do with major issue, big massive transaction, or a big massive thing that can involve millions of pounds or hundreds of thousands of pounds, then they make a sikhara. No, that's what I meant by this. The hadith means that the people consider it is nothing, but we used to make a sikhara. He said, fi kulli shay. He said, everything, in everything which is Considerable. Not everything that means I'm going to make, as I said, Prophet of Allah said, okay, what do you have wives as food? We have chicken, we have meat. Let me have a istikhara. Which one to eat? No hadith had said this, told us about this. And the Prophet used to make a istikhara like that. Now, you have to ask a question. Man, that's it. Khushu' in the dua and the person, you know, this is what uh, one of the scholars, he said, I'm not really worried about Allah fulfilling my dua. I'm worried, what am I going to be saying to him? Look at this. Think, think about it. I'm not worried about Allah fulfilling my dua, but I'm worried to put these words and put the khushu' with it when I talk to Allah Azza wa and asking him. Because some people are going to ask, he doesn't know what to say. <laughs> he doesn't know what to say, how to put words together. He doesn't know. So you have to learn how to, for example, give the magnitude to Allah, so to exalt him before you start. And you show that you are in need of him, and you are the poor, and he's the rich. Okay? So this is the person who's making khushua in his dua, not to say, oh Lord, if you wish, you can give me this, if you wish, it's up to you. What is? So you're not really, you're not really in need of his dua. Allah says, okay, if you don't need it, no, you don't need it. Because some people say, if you wish, you give it to me. I, I mean, you are, no. Alih fi dua persist, oh Lord, give me. He wants you to do this. Persist, don't say I'm, I'm not sure. Persist. Ask him for the shifa. Okay? You can't you guys say, oh, you, I'm your slave, you could do whatever you like with me. But Allah asked you, I'm your slave, but you can't say you could do whatever you like to me. I want the best for me. Do you understand that? Don't say you could do whatever you like to me. Yes, he is. He's in his, within his capability to do whatever he wants. But the Prophet of Allah, even in the moments of uh, desperation, that you are a person now, you're desperate, you're about to die. What sort of dua is actually recommended here? You're about to die. Or you are in a place, a situation that life is not, it's sort of worthless now for you. You don't want to live. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, that is to ask Allah Azza wa Allahumma, O Lord, that if this, Haya is good for me, make me to live. 
And if death is good for me, make me to die. So I'm leaving it to your decision, O oh Lord. At the same time, I have reached the point where for me is death is a better to get rid of. But I'm just saying, O oh Lord. Allahumma ahyini ma karat al hadu khayran li. Wa tawafani ma karat al wafatu khayran li. But I don't ask for the death because I'm in depression and, I'm, and I won't. No, don't ask. But you don't know where the good is. And that's istikhara, isn't it? That's istikhara. You make an istikhara to Allah Azza Give me the choice. You are in your hand. Okay. It's not in my hand to go live longer and to die. It's in your hand only. You have the choice to give me Allah. What is better for me? No. Um, are there different wordings for istikhara, the dua? And which the is different the wordings, authentic? it's not authentic. Habib Abdullah Ibn Mas'ud Abu Sayyid Al-Khadri, I just said number of hadith, about three or four. But this is the one which is the correct. There is one which is Allahumma khirli, which is not istikhara, just dua. Oh Lord, choose for me. Just like this, and it's being mentioned. This is for the person who doesn't know the dua al istikhara. For the last question, question? Just one more on istikhara. Can I combine salat al istikhara with a nafil salat? Give me an example. What do you mean? To make a salat al istikhara. I think it didn't come from the beginning of the class, that's why. Okay. So, everybody, what should we do? Make the salat al istikhara. The Tahit al Masjid, or we should actually make the two designated raka. Designated khalas. You see, all of them scholars became now. You missed it. You're not alim poros now. This was clarified, but just I think uh, someone's asking can we make one prayer of istikhara and then dua for one item and then dua for another istikhara item? I so you're making one prayer, istikhara. but for two different dua? No. Each salat istikhara is connected to one dua istikhara. I didn't really have this. Oh, subhanallah. <laughs> and I add that one. Each dua, dua, murtabitun bis salah, kullun ala hida. Naam. Tayyip, khalas, another question? Last question. Um, did the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, in the battle of Al Yamama, say, Ya Muhammad, after his death? And if yes, then what can we understand from There's it? There's no such thing. Delete. <laughs> Subhanakallah bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta wa atubu ilaik How how do we use qistal hindi powder for cure Qistal Hindi, the Prophet had uh, actually he had praised it and it will be a cure. If you want to see how it is to be used, then I would say put it on YouTube and we'll see actually how to do it. And it's a very good. You could uh, drink it and it will flush everything. It's got magic and everything. Please see uh, other lectures for this. I have talked about it before. <laughs>